the last kinematic equation that we deal with in physics uh, 20. And uh, let's take a look at it. As you have noticed from the previous three lessons, in kinematics we deal with five variables. Initial, final, velocities, distance or displacement, acceleration, and time. And we'll always, uh, in an equation, usually four of them are involved. We give you information that leads you to three of them, and then you use your uh, equation or formula to find the fourth one, which is usually your unknown. So using the first two formulas that we derived, we can substitute by taking this first formula, and t here is also equal to t here. And so instead of writing t in the first equation, we write vf minus vi over a, substitute by multiplying it by the first part of that expression. So basically, this times the second part when we put them together and then reduce it down, we end up with vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2ad. And remember, in this first equation, we uh, don't have any mention of acceleration. In the second equation, we don't have any mention of displacement. In this equation, notice there's no mention of time, because when we substituted for time right here, we eliminated it from the equation. But it's a, it's a good uh, equation to have. It's the fourth equation for accelerated motion. When you don't know the time, you can still figure out uh, other components, and then once you know those other components, you might be able to go back and figure out what time is. So given that fourth kinematic expression, let's do a little bit of practice. Uh, it is critical that you do all assigned problems to gain experience with the problem solving process. All right, so VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. Sometimes this is called the quadratic kinematic expression because it contains the, uh, the squares there. So and a, a cyclist initially at rest accelerated uniformly at a rate of 2.5 meters per second squared over a distance of 20 meters. What was the final speed of the cyclist? Now this one's pretty straightforward. What you basically do is initially at rest, so what's your initial velocity? Well, it's obviously zero. Your acceleration is 2.5 over a distance of 20 meters, so basically zero plus 2 times 2.5 is 5, 5 times 20 is 100, but of course 100 is VF squared. And so then you take the square root of 100 and you get 10 meters per second. So try that, write it down, do your substitution, and then uh, calculate it, and you should get, when you take the square root of 100, you will get 10. All right, so there's your first example. A uh, fairly simple, just substitution type of problem. All right, another example with the same formula. A car was accelerated uniformly from 20 meters per second at a rate of 3.5 over a distance of 100. Uh, the difference between this and the first example is this time the initial velocity is not zero. It's not at rest. But you do know that it's 20 meters per second. So 20 squared, that's 400 and then times 2 times the acceleration. Acceleration is 3.5 over a distance of 100, and you will get a fairly large number. Now, what happens, of course, when you take that number and take the square root? Remember, that large number is the square of VF. We don't want the square of VF. We want the square root. When you take that square root, you should get something very close to 33.2 meters per second, all right? And uh, this gives us the uh, distance. We'd have to use a little bit of logic to figure out the uh, direction, if direction was a factor in this problem. In this case, it's not, but it could be, and there are ways to uh, determine the final direction, all right? One way uh, is by drawing a picture. Very, uh, very helpful there. And in the final example, we have a, a need to manipulate the formula for the unknown, in this case, d. So what we're given is enough information. Uh, we're probably given the final velocity, the initial velocity, and the But in this case, we're asked how long. And of course, that's the case. 
I skier initially at 11 meters per second, accelerated uniformly at 1.2, down a hill to a final speed of 27 meters per second. What distance did the skier travel? Um, so therefore, uh, as I said, we are given VF, we're given VI, we're given acceleration, but we don't know what D is. And so we have to manipulate our formula for D. The way to do that is first subtract VI squared from both sides. That gives us VF minus VI or VI, VF squared minus VI squared. And then we divide by 2A and dividing by 2A, we put that down in the bottom and we end up with D is equal to VF squared. Now that we have the, um, or D is equal to VF squared minus VI squared over 2A. Now that we have that, we can do our substitution. VF is 27.0, so 27.0 squared minus 11 squared, and then we divide by 2 times the acceleration, and we should get 253. A little error in the presentation here, there should be no per seconds here, it should be just meters, so a little error there. All right, 253 meters is the correct response. So down that hill, she went a distance of 253. So we've given you all of the uh, four kinematic expressions and now it's time to do a bunch of practice. One thing though we might want to bring into uh, uh, into the front is what happens when you drop an object. When you drop an object it undergoes acceleration and it's a unique acceleration on the earth because it's a fairly fixed number no matter if it's a heavy object or a light object it accelerates at a particular look at uh, some examples using gravity as our acceleration. 